My name is Magnus, and I'm going to talk about Android reverse engineering. So let's start with a question, why do you want to reverse engineer apps? And um, I see three main reasons of doing this. Uh, one is to review and audit the functionality of the app, see what's going on. And uh, secondly, you might want to patch or modify the app to change the behavior of the functionality. If you want to exploit the app, uh, it's crucial to understand what's going on in the app. So uh, you'll go through the code and, and look for weaknesses or bugs that you can exploit. For me, it's a lot about privacy and uh, seeing what goes on in the apps I have on my phone, kind of what data they collect or uh, things like that. So um, in the news recently, we have seen a lot of uh, things about companies uh, tracking you and selling that data um, stealing your your uh, photos and, and things like that so basically the only thing that you can do to be sure that this is not going on in your apps is to use reverse engineering and, and dig into the apps and, and, and look at the functionality yourself so um, when you install an app on your phone from the Play Store you will receive uh, the app in, a, in the APK format. The APK is a bundle containing all the stuff needed to run your application. So first we have the manifest, which tells, which tells uh, what kind of components are included in the, uh, in the app, uh, what permissions it has, and things like that. Uh, it also contains the resources needed for the, uh, for the app. This might be uh, like icons, sound clips, um, or localized uh, strings to support different languages. And of course, uh, we have the code, and this is both the code of the app and any third-party library that your app uses. And there are some core concepts of an app that you need to understand in order to successfully reverse engineer it. Uh, first, we have activities. Uh, an activity is the um, kind of maps to a screen on your in your app. So if you have a login prompt, that is typically a, an activity. Uh, when you get into the app, uh, you will have another, for instance, like if you have an overview page, that will be another activity and so on. Um, then you have services. A service is a, kind of a long running background task that, that doesn't have a UI. So it might do like computational stuff uh, then we have content providers, which is uh, a way for apps to uh, expose data from the app to other apps on your phone in a controlled manner. And lastly, we have intents, which are uh, messages being sent uh, both internally in the app to control, like switch from one activity to another, pass data, etc. But it can also be uh, cross apps or uh, be notifications from the, from the OS itself uh, to the app. So let's, let's start with a demo. I have um, a phone here connected over USB to my, to my computer. Let's try and find an app to play with. Uh, let's see here, we can look at the top, top apps and see what we can find. Um, I kind of like to uh, look at apps that um, doesn't really need a network access but uh they still require it so for instance here is a it's like a barcode scanner app i'll see what kind of permissions it requires so this uh this qr and barcode scanner wants access to my contacts uh it wants to be able to read and write uh, change everything on my phone or my files uh, take pictures probably yeah, that makes sense uh view my Wi-Fi connections. I don't know why it would want to do that. Uh, it wants to read my identity, like my phone number, etc. Uh, also not really a good good thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good uh, starting point to look into. So let's install this app. There are different ways of getting uh, apps uh, to your computer, but uh, the easiest way uh, is just to install it on your uh, your phone and then we can pull it from the phone to the computer. So first let's just see what this app do. Uh, let's see if I have a barcode here somewhere. Okay, it had a splash screen, showed some, showed some ads and uh, let's see if I can, oh, here we go. So 
here, scanned a barcode. Um, yeah, displayed the barcode number, uh, saw more ads, etc. So, all right, cool. Um, now let's switch to um, the computer again. And um, we will use something called ADB, which is the Android Debug Bridge. Uh, it's a command line tool um, that you use to like manage or you know, interface your phone from your computer. So for instance, I can I can bring up a shell, uh, like a terminal console prompt on my uh, on my phone from my computer. So here, let's see, we can do uh, PM, which is packet manager, this packages, which will list all of the installed apps on my phone. So let's uh, try and grab for the QR scanner. Here we have it. And in order to find the uh, the APK of this package, I need to um, do a PM path of the, the name of the app, QR scanner. So that gave me the uh, full path to the to the APK. So let's copy this. Uh, ADB, I can use ADB pull to um, uh, to pull files from the phone to my computer. So I'll do this. QR APK. Now I have the uh, APK here on my computer. And now I will use a tool called APK Tool or APK Studio which is basically a wrapper uh, around uh, the APK tool and uh, some other command line tools uh, that we can use to disassemble, uh, decompile and disassemble this, um, this APK. So let's uh, just select our APK, um, decompile it. So in the background now, it will run APK tool, which is a command line tool um, that is really useful for reverse engineering because it's uh, it can decompile the application and it can also recompile the application into an APK again. So um, let's, um, you, you can actually view like all of the stuff from the APK here directly in the, the APK studio, but I kind of like to use uh, an IDE instead. So here we have IntelliJ uh, IDE and let's uh, import the, the decompile app and basically just click next, next, next. So here we go. Um, so we can start by looking at the, um, the manifest file. And um, in the manifest file, it will list uh the all of the permissions that the app uses or wants to access so here we can see the same things that we saw on the app store so it wants full network access um look at my wi-fi's uh flashlight uh, yeah. vibrate wake lock camera read contacts uh, read write to external storage uh, external storage is basically the the sd card of your of your phone uh, and yeah some some other uh, permissions then we have the application tag which is the main tag for the application um, and this contains all of the activities that this application has so here we have one activity called uh, get rating activity and uh, here we have a bunch of, of different activities so again the activities are related to a screen or a, like a view in the application. Um, applications can be launched by uh, intents. Those are the messages. So one type of event or intent is the, uh, the intent to start the application. So when you, from the launcher of your phone, clicks an app icon and it launches, uh, the app will, the activity that's listening for this intent uh, will be launched. So when the application launch, uh, it will launch the activity with the name com KitKat scanner lib scanner application logo activity. Um, so let's let's see what this activity does. The decompiled data will be in the Smalley folder. 
and we go to come kick cats oh, okay let's see what's the name of the activity again uh, scanner lib scanner application logo activity scanner lib scanner application logo activity before we start looking at this let's let's talk a bit about smally when you code an application in for android uh, you typically do this in either java or kotlin and then you compile the java into something a format called dex which is a byte code format uh, if you have an older phone like an older android uh, android 4 i think or 5 uh, it it uses uh, jit uh, like a just-in-time compa compiler of the dex uh, and then put it on the runtime called Dalvik, which in turn uh, translate the bytecode into like native ARM uh, code to run on your CPU. Uh, if you have a newer phone, like a modern phone, uh, the same thing, but here once you install the app, it will convert the DEX code into something called OAT, and the new runtime is called ART, uh, but uh, for the sake of reverse engineering, uh, we don't really have to care about this. So, um, since Dex is bytecode um, binary, it's 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 not really human friendly to read. So, what we do is that we disassemble the Dex into something called Smalley, um, and Smalley uh, looks something like this. First, we have data types. So, uh, in Java, you can have the primitive types and the reference types. And the reference types are either objects or arrays. Um, primitive types are indicated by a single letter in, in Smalley. So V is for void, set is for boolean, integer is i, etc. So just like machine code, uh, Dex also has instructions. So uh, for instance, to invoke uh, or call a method, you, you use the invoke instruction. Um, you also use registers, so if you're in a method, uh, you have uh, any number of local registers, which is referred to as v0, v1, v2, etc. Um, the arguments passed to the method is also in the local registers, uh, and they're actually on in the end. So if we have, uh, say that we have two local variables, they will be in v0 v1 and if we have one parameter it will it will end up in v2 but you can also refer to the first parameter as p0 which would point to v2 and uh, like other object oriented uh, languages uh, <clears throat> the uh, the first uh, parameter will be a pointer to this so it's the 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 object that you're currently running in uh, <coughs> unless it's a static uh, method all the registers are 32 bits. Uh, if you want to, if you need to use like a primitive uh, long, that is a 64 bit um, primitive, uh, you, you will just use two uh, registers and, and put half of the, the long in, in in each. So let's let's go back to this, this simple example. So here we have a class, it's a public class called Hello World. Uh, it inherits from Java Lang object uh, it has one method, uh, which is a public static. It's called main. It has it takes an array, which is indicated by this this bracket here. It's an array of Java line string objects, and the return value or the return type of this method is, is v, which stands for void. Um, this method uses two registers, so. Um, uh, here we can see it's using v0, v1, and um, yeah, let's see see what we're doing here. So we call the the instruction sket object. Uh, so uh, we want to copy something into the v0 register, and we want to co copy from javalang system uh, and a member called out of type java io print stream. So this is a static member, so we'll copy the static member out from Javalang system, put it into v0. Here we store a string, a constant string, into v1. Then we invoke virtual, uh, which is uh, call a normal method on the class. 
we pass this, which in this case is the print stream from system out. So on the instance of system out, we call print ln and we pass it one parameter, uh, which is we one hello world the string and the signature of the print line uh, returns void. Or, yeah, it's a void. So um, yeah, this calls, um, the entire thing of this, this class calls system out print line with hello world and then it exists this method uh, just not returning anything. It might look a bit complicated if you haven't really looked into uh, reverse engineering uh, earlier, but uh, if you compare this to, for instance, uh, machine code on x86 or ARM directly, this is it's much more human readable than than what you will see there. So uh, as we saw here, uh, the uh, the class names uh, and the method names uh, are typically uh, preserved uh, in the text format. But um, what you can do is that you can obfuscate the the text code. So um, the simplest way of doing obfuscation is to just rename like internal classes and internal methods because uh, since no one needs to refer to these classes or methods directly from outside the application, you can just rename them to anything as long as you keep those new names uh, like unique within the app. So what you do is that, so in this example, if we have a class called ball, which has a method get color, we can just rename the class ball to A and the get color to A as well, because like uh, the class A is not the same thing as the method A. So this makes it a bit more tricky to follow the code, but um, yeah, I usually use like pen and paper uh, to kind of keep track on keep track on what's uh, what kind of mapping that is. So once I figure out that a actually is a ball, I will just write that down and say like a is ball and uh, function a is get color on 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 the ball. So uh, let's jump back to. Um, the code of this QR app. So uh, we had the first activity called logo activity. Uh, for an activity in Android, uh, first it will call the the constructor of this class. And constructors in Smalley is called um, init. So we can see what it does. It basically just inits. Uh, here you can see the obfuscation. It's it has a boolean member called D. Uh, so Z is boolean. Um, let's see. It, it has a handle. Blah, blah, blah. So a lot about a lot of things in reverse engineering is just to uh, get used to seeing what's kind of uh, important and what is what you can skip because a lot of stuff is kind of not that interesting. So um, so here I don't see that much interesting in the in the constructor. So let's look at the first method method that is called on an activity once it's it's created. So that's on create. Uh, let's hide this one. Um, so we call the the on create of the super class. Um, we get um, this is from our layout, which is kind of um, an XML uh, layout theme for for a content view. We initialize this this activity with this view. Uh, blah blah blah. Here we initialize the 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 add framework. Uh, let's see, blah, blah blah. We have some kind of splash title. We had this. This is so. This is the splash screen, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, here, here you set set visible. Probably with uh, I P one, yeah. So here we actually make the the, the screen visible, and uh, then you here you have an inner class. So inner classes, if you compile uh, Java, uh, and you have inner classes within your class, they will be kind of um, prefixed like this. So the first inner class of log activity, logo activity will be logo activity $1. So we can see what 
so this this apparently this has a lot of inner classes um, let's check the uh, the one that was uh, referred to so it's uh it has the interface runnable which means um it's it can be a, a separate thread or something like that um blah blah, blah. So the run method is what will be ran when when this gets executed. So uh, invoke it gets um, gets the logo activity appointed to the logo activity, and then it invokes static. It invokes a static method of the logo activity called a, uh, and passes the the uh, the logo activity instance. Okay. So let's go back to our class here. So, um, so that was the instance of the class that uh, that we um, initialized here or we created here. Uh, we didn't execute that run method yet. Uh, so here it has uh, an integer, and then we called Android OS handler post delayed and pass. Let's see. The v0 is the this inner class that we initialized. So yeah, we to the OS handler we we call post delayed and pass it this this inner class. So uh, what post delayed will do is that it will um, right. So it's it takes two two parameters here: the runnable and uh, a long. So um, after long milliseconds. Uh, it will execute that run method. So after this many milliseconds, it will uh, execute the run method of that class. Let's see, the class did uh, call the static method A uh, and pass it to logo activity instance. Oops. So let's um, go back. So let's let's search for the uh, the A method of the class that we would it will call from the runnable. So this method is called A, but it doesn't match the signature of the one that we were calling because the, the one that we were calling um, had the logo activity as the single parameter. Also, it was a static method. So here, this might be it. So it's a static. It takes the logo activity, but it also takes an, uh, another parameter. So it wasn't that one. Uh, this is not a static. This is not a static. This is a static takes. So here, here we have it. This matches. So if we look here, it takes the log activity object and returns void. It's a static. So if we switch back and see, we call it a. Oh, here we go. So we call a with the inst with the logo activity object and re returns void. So yeah, this matches this one. Um, so here, what does this method do? We invoke direct, so like a normal, not a static uh, call, to logo activity E. And since it's not a static, it passes uh, the instance of the class that we execute the method on. So uh, yeah, it's a, the logo, it's a member, a method of logo activity of the instance P0. So. Let's see. Uh, so it's E without parameters and it's a void. So let's search for this. Yeah, here we got it. E. So let's see. What does this do? Um, get the application, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it starts another activity and this activity is, the, is called capture activity. And finish uh, on an activity closes the uh, like end that view, so that will close the the log activity, and we will start the capture activity instead. So going back to uh, how the application looked, let's see. So we launched the application. It shows the, the splash screen. Uh, shows an add and then we come to the the scanner so um okay that that kind of shows um, what the 
application do. So what, what, what can we do if we want to change the behavior of this application? So say that we want to skip this splash screen and go directly to um, the, the, the scanner activity. So uh, what we could do is that instead of um, uh, doing this uh, handler post delayed thing, um, we can just call the, the E method directly. Uh, that will kind of close the logo activity and then start the, the capture activity. But there's actually an uh, even easier way of, of achieving this. So if we just go to the manifest, so if we repeat the, um, the activity that will be launched when you click an application is the one that has the, the main intent, which was the, the logo activity. And underneath here, we have the capture activity that was the second um, screen. So what we could do that if we take, we, ma we make the, um, this scanner activity uh, the main activity instead. So let's remove, oh, let's just un uncomment this now. Uh, just like this. So hopefully what will happen now is that when I launch the application, it will, instead of launching the splash screen, it will go directly and launch the, the capture activity. So let's, um, let's try this. So we can go back to the APK, APK Studio and we can build the application so with the changes, oops, sorry, uh, with the changes that we did. So in order to um, install the application, we need to uninstall the one that, that is already installed. So let's come kick and QR scanner. So either I just, um, I can use like, uh, just install it from my phone, but I can also use ADB to, Oh, all right. Uh, to uninstall the app. So hopefully, it, yeah. So it went away. So let's go back to the APK Studio. We built the app. It succeeded. We need to sign it, but we can sign it with just a dummy certificate for now. Um, and uh, then we installed it. So it showed up on the phone. We try and launch it and see what's going on. Let me go directly to the to the scanner this time. That's one thing that you can do to to modify the application.